Rasulullah Sallallahu sent Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Bahrain to collect the jizya, to collect the tax. And the Prophet Sallallahu had concluded a peace treaty with the people of Bahrain. And he appointed Al-Ala ibn Hadrami radiallahu ta'ala anhu as their chief. So when Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu came back to Medina from Bahrain with a lot of money, the Ansar heard of his, of his coming back. And it happened to coincide with Salatul Fajr in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led them in Salatul Fajr. And then they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately after the Salah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he smiled and he said, it may be that you've heard of the arrival of Abu Ubaidah and what he has with him. Okay. So they said, yes, O Rasulullah, yes, O Messenger of Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, have the good news and the hope of that which will please you. But he said, I swear by Allah, I'm not worried about you ever becoming poor, but rather what I am worried about is that wealth will be given to you in abundance as it was given to those that came before you. And so you will fight over it the way that they fought over it. And it will distract you, it will divert you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that it distracted them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet was saying, I'm not worried about your becoming poor as an ummah. I'm actually worried about the contrary, that you'll become wealthy. And so you'll start to compete over that wealth and it will lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why would the Prophet ﷺ fear wealth for us? Arrogance, conceit. You know, turning away from Allah is not generally produced by poverty. While no doubt they're distracted at times while seeking a livelihood and substance. However, if the intention is pure, that while they're seeking their livelihood, uh, that can become worship. However, when a person is blessed with a lot of wealth, then they're susceptible to certain spiritual diseases and certain spiritual distractions. And collectively as an ummah, when the doors open to us as an ummah, then that's where a lot of the things that happen to us, happen to us as an ummah and as individuals. So this is connected to the hadith about wasted time and health, because essentially here time and health is wasted on what? Is wasted on money. It's connected to the ahadith about being a stranger because one feels like all that they have is this life and so they try to collect what they can. It's connected to the hadith about false hopes because a person thinks that money will satisfy them even in their old age. The Sahaba were not lost as a result of the wealth that came to them. SubhanAllah, you look at the conquest of the greatest palace in the world at the time was the palace of Kisra. It was the most lavish palace that was known to the world at the time of the Prophet And when the Sahaba conquered the palace of Kisra, they had absolutely no movement in their hearts towards what they were seeing of the jewelry and what they were seeing of the rugs and what they were seeing of the furniture and so on and so forth. They were completely indifferent to it. All they were thinking about was bringing this back to Bayt al -Nad and the way that this would enrich the Ummah. That's all they thought about. We know the narration that before the Sahaba were able to conquer the palace of Kisra, they went down into the river and they came out of it with their horses and their camels and they were completely dry and they did not lose their things. It was a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the army of Sa'ad radiallahu anhu and Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the, and the Muslim army that they were able to go down into the river and come out with absolutely no water on them and they did not lose their possessions. Now Abul Hassan says what's more impressive than that is that they came into this world and they left out of it completely untainted by this dunya. They were not moved by what they were seeing in that palace of Kisla. And it's connected to the loss of trust because why do people eventually cheat and make false oaths and uh, try to take people out? Because they cheat for money, right? So it's connected to the overall quality of people, the condition of the world, and what happens to the individuals. Which brings us to the next hadith. Ibn Abbas narrates that the Prophet said, but if the son of Adam had two valleys of money, he would wish for a third and nothing can satisfy or fill the belly of the child of Adam except for dirt, meaning death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the one who turns back to him. 